Welcome to the first lesson of the Footprint module. My name is Alessandro Galli and I'm the director of the Mediterranean Minion program at Global Footprint Network. I would like to start this lesson by highlighting the key message behind the ecological footprint. The message is that all human activities take place on a planet that has ecological limits. So meeting our daily needs come at the cost of the planet. And depending on how we decide to live our life, we can either reduce this cost or increase it. The ecological footprint helps us recognize the limits of the ecosystem that support our activities. Through our analysis at Global Footprint Network, we have seen that as humans, we are unfortunately demanding the equivalent of slightly more than 1.7 planets worth of resources and services. And year after year, since the 70s, we have been accumulating a debt with our planet. In other words, this means that the planet needs about 19 months to regenerate what we consume as humans in 12 months. So, the first take-home message in this uh, lesson is that our planet has limits limits for providing the resources that we consume and limits for providing the ecosystem services that are required to sequester our waste. So by measuring supply and demand, the ecological footprint method shows us ecological unbalances so that we can take action and reduce our demand on the planet. We like to remind ourselves, and I therefore like to remind you all, that one planet is not a goal but is the reality in which we live. And we must therefore be able to measure how much of this one and only planet we use. You can think of the ecological footprint as an accounting tool for natural capital accounting rather than for financial accounting. You can think of it as a simple environmental accounting tool that measures the human appropriation of natural resources and ecological services that our planet is able to produce and regenerate in a given year. So how does this happen? The ecological footprint managed to do this by means of two different metrics, which can be then compared among themselves. On one side, the first metric is called ecological footprint, and it helps us quantify human demand. On the, other, uh, on the other side, biocapacity, the second metric, helps us quantify the planet's supply for natural resources and ecological services. Let me use an example to be more uh, clear. I am sure that in any business, being it a park, a tour operator, an hotel or a restaurant, you have every year to look at your financials. What I mean here is that to run your operation smoothly and arrive at the end of the year, you must keep track of your income and your expenditure. So to understand the ecological footprint, just think at the ecological footprint as a way to measure your expenditure and at the biocapacity as a way to assess your income. The only difference is that we are not speaking of money, but we are speaking of natural resources. So simply put, just think of ecological footprint accounting as a way to assess ecological balance sheet. What I mean here, balances between that compare, let's say, what you can uh, obtain from nature every year, so what is your annual ecological income, and at the same time also understand where you are spending your resources, so what your ecological expenditures are, being it for providing food, for transportation, or so on. So through the rest of this uh, module, the lessons that are uh, left in this module, you will have the chance to learn more about this accounting tool and how it can help you set up low-impact ecotourism patterns. Thank you so much and enjoy the lesson.